Dr. Dust, what is one of the most common differences you've seen in people? I mean, I think my favorite one to start with is introversion, extroversion. Got it. Because everyone knows what it is, for one. Yep. Um, at least they think they know what okay. it is. So introversion, extroversion, I think most people think of it as social ability, where introversion being, you know, you like to be on your own, doing your own thing, where extroversion, you like to be out and talking with more people, and, and that's part of it. Mm -hmm. But I think if you peel back the layers, another angle in terms of understanding it is the fact that we all process information differently. Mm -hmm. And so in a workplace... You know, it's more than just your willingness to talk with other people. Mm -hmm. It's also about how you like to understand and solve problems. Mm -hmm. Where introverts, they're doing everything inside the brain. Uh -huh. And they're going through all this information and they like to do some slow thinking. Mm -hmm. Where extroverts think out loud and in the moment. And mm -hmm. if you plug that into what's the typical workplace look like, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of stuff happens in the moment. And mm -hmm. if you're not exactly, you know, participating in the moment, then it looks like either you don't care or that you're not capable. And that's a problem. Okay, can I tell a really good story on this? Please do. This just happened last week with Darren. So Darren's yeah. co-founder of Cloverleaf yeah. with me. Yeah. And we were in a leadership team meeting, and we were talking through our OKRs. And it's like, yeah. it's December, so it's an yeah. interesting time of year to talk about OKRs, which is how we set goals yeah. for the year and for quarters. And we were talking about... Q1 OKRs, but we're mid-December, like racing to the end of 2021's OKRs. And totally. we're like, we're hitting them and it's exciting. And some yeah. people are just really heads down. And then I'm trying to say like, also January is coming. So let's be ready for that, right? Sure. And um, in the meeting, I was trying to say like, hey, what support do people need? Because I know we're all kind of like busy with finishing out this year. Yeah. But we also, we're the leaders. We need to be prepared for where we're taking our people right. come January 1. And I could just tell it wasn't getting communicated right. Like yeah. people are getting a little defensive and like I don't have time for this, you know. And so I just sat down to like think. I just like stopped talking and I was just thinking. Yeah. And two days later, Darren and I are in our one-on-one -on -one and he was like talking about that moment. And he said, Kirsten, and then you went silent with this look of disapproval on your face. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. No! <laughs> it wasn't disapproval. Yeah. I was thinking That's because right. I'm an introvert and it doesn't yeah. come out. Like it takes like mental processing for the words to get formed in my brain mm -hmm. to come out of That's my right. mouth. Whereas That's Darren's right. an extrovert. It just, you ask him any question, he's got the answer right away, right? right? Off the cuff. And so I think that's such a classic example of like, yeah. it came off as a silent look of disapproval. Right. Right. It was just you doing your deep thinking internally yeah. rather than externally. Yeah. Which is better because if I had just kept talking, it w yeah. I would have dug the hole deeper, right? Right. right. And that's where the, the self-awareness and other awareness is helpful because to the degree that you can be self-aware that that's how you typically operate, mm -hmm. then you can have this conversation with others to help them be more other aware. So, for yeah. example, when I engage in meetings with colleagues if I'm starting to realize that, hey, I'm probably going to be working with these people for a decent amount of time, mm -hmm. I typically say, hey, during these sessions, don't be offended when I probably don't say much during the meetings because I am introverted. I'm definitely more in that introvert, ambivert range. Mm -hmm. And I will tell them where you'll see the most input from me is after the meeting. I will be the first one who will summarize everything that happened and make sure that everybody's on the same page with some written documentation mm -hmm. that's... Here's the plan, mm -hmm. as opposed to in the moment. Now, I still do it in the moment, but at the same time, I'm expressing, here's how I typically do things. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a level set so that everybody knows what to expect. Yep. You can tell when people are <laughs> extroverted, but it's a little bit harder to tell when people are introverted, I think. Why do you think that is? Because extroverted, it's just so visible, right? Yeah. It's happening right now, and you hear it and you see it, Yeah. where when it's introverted, it could it could be more along the lines of, I just don't want to participate in this, or I don't think this is a good conversation, and my silence means that I disapprove. I just have a silent yeah. look of disapproval. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so do we have helpful tips, takeaways for people who might be trying to figure out how to apply this to their workplace and seeing those differences and how to leverage them? Yeah, we should pick that apart because I think part of it is, number one, becoming aware of it, number two, communicating that to others, but also with that, understanding what to do with it. So. I think when there's information processing in a team setting or in a dyadic setting, 
to be able to... Okay, what to, does dyadic mean? Sorry, it's a very <laughs> academic word. Dyadic would be one-on-one. Okay, right, So this is it. a dyadic podcast Thank right you, now, Professor right? Dust, Where you yes. have, if it's a team, you know, it could be, t- technically a team is two or more, but dyadic relationships is the vast majority of our communication. Mm-hmm. It's something happening between two people. And that dyadic communication could be in the presence of more people, mm-hmm. or you could have you know, all sorts of communication happening within a team setting. Right? So a lot of times when people are thinking about how do teams operate, it's a group of people sitting together in a meeting, you know, face-to-face or on a virtual meeting, and how does the interaction go down? And so some of the takeaways, I think, can be recognizing that we need to withhold judgment, and if people aren't participating, it might actually be because we need to be the ones to prompt them because they don't feel comfortable speaking up or voicing Mm -hmm. whatever it is going on inside their head in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so like a great example is at the end of a meeting, if there's specific people that haven't said anything yet, ask them, hey, Mm. Kirsten, you haven't said anything yet. I know you're probably just processing everything going on. Mm. You know, what what do you think about all this? As opposed to leaving the room thinking, man, Kirsten did not care. She was not engaged. That's right, Mm -hmm. that's right. And also, if you know that about somebody, and, and others might not know that, or maybe need a reminder in a prime, saying that reminds everybody that this is a safe conversation, and that's actually okay. Mm-hmm. And so, for one, I'm signaling, hey, Kirsten's an introvert, everybody. This is how she processes. But then it's also reminding everybody and giving them a sense of psychological safety that, oh, it's okay to process internally. I shouldn't feel obligated to speak up if I mm-hmm. don't have anything that mm-hmm. I think is like really impactful or important to say. Mm-hmm. And that's an important difference because a lot of times extroverts think out loud and they mm-hmm. think uh, through things in the moment, in the presence of others, and they like that quick interaction and all the feedback they get instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Where introverts, they want it to be completely clear on what exactly they're gonna say. And there needs to be a purpose behind mm. why they're saying it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not all the time, but in general, that seems to be the case. And also an important caveat, not every it's not a dichotomous variable, introvert versus extrovert. Mm-hmm. It's it's continuous, meaning you could fall anywhere in that range. And so some people would... Uh, it's a spectrum. It's a from, spectrum. In layman's terms, outside yeah. of academic terms, it's yeah. a spectrum. Yes. Yeah. Bring in that, yes. Continuum is, again, academic. Yeah. <laughs> but the spectrum, you know, a lot of people are ambiverts. Yeah. Meaning they kind of fall somewhere in the middle, right? So mm-hmm. if you've taken the 16 types and sometimes you're an E, sometimes you're an I, or maybe you're only a 60% or a 40% one or the mm-hmm. other, you know, it means you're not too far along one way or the other. So you're, you're exhibiting tendencies of both. Mm-hmm. And so recognizing that as well, because at sometimes your introverted self shows up and at other times your extroverted self might show up. Yep. Right. So like in a meeting where you're super comfortable with the people that you're with, mm-hmm. maybe you show up more so as that, you know, ambivert to extrovert, mm-hmm. but with new people or new situations, maybe you don't. That's oh, important yeah. too. Way more sit back and observant. Yes. You know, another thing I actually want to point out on this. So, so you did, you know, a helpful tip on like, how do you try to leverage this in your teams and yeah. in groups? I also feel like it's important to do some introspection and figure out where you fit because I we we live in an extroverted world successful people are gregarious and they always have the right answer and they're fast on their feet right yeah which being more introverted naturally I I specifically remember in my like middle school and teen years when I learned that's not okay and it's time to be an extrovert if you're gonna be a anybody you know that's right. <laughs> and so for me like it came with a lot of like sh- like you should do this shoulding as I say I should yeah. it all over myself yeah. and and <laughs> didn't actually realize what it is is introversion extroversion I didn't have that language right. and um, and so I think it's important for people to know the difference yes so you can read the room better but also so that you can have permission to be yourself and understand like right. when I'm in back-to-back meetings all day I jello I my brain just turns to jello and mush sure. By the end of the day, I'm really not productive. But if I can break it up with time where it's okay for me to sit alone. Like, Mm -hmm. so for example, here at the office, where sometimes we're at the office, when I come into the office, um, everyone's desks like face each other where yeah. I work, except right. for mine faces the <laughs> wall. <laughs> and I was like, y'all like don't feel rejection. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, yeah. it's it's good yeah. to me because I it, it allows me to like 
have less stimulation. I'm not yeah, wa- right. walking, watching people That's walk by. And, really important. Um, and so I think it's just really important for people to know that about themselves and also to be able to communicate. I'm not rejecting you by facing the wall. Right. I love you and I love yeah. interacting with you and right. I need to focus, right? And everyone's That's, great with that. When you know yeah. it about yourself, you can put words to it and then you can schedule your day and orient your desk around what, yeah. what works best for you. And that's an important part because the energy is what you're speaking to, right? Your right. mind turns to jello after you've been engaged in all of these interactions face, you know, back to back to back to back. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it has to do with energy, right? So introverts, it's an energy drain when we gain in all these interactions. Mm-hmm. But for extroverts, it's an energy boost. And so it does have a lot to do with our sensory processing and whether or not that deflates or, or inflates our, our, our energy. And to know that is important too, right? So if you're in, in engagements with extroverts and you're the introvert, mm-hmm. recognize that that's energizing for them and do mm-hmm. your best to participate in it because that is signaling that you're being a good colleague for them. Mm-hmm. And then the same vice versa, right? Like when you have those that are just clearly overstimulated, they've been doing too much, give them the space mm-hmm. to do it. And I really love the comment about making sure you're in the right environment. And I do think that we're we live in an extroverted world in that as we moved to the service economy, the knowledge economy and information economy, like more and more we're being forced to engage in knowledge sharing with others and mm. that's communicative and there's mm. lots of interaction that happens to do that. And so it's become harder in, in I think many academics perspectives to be an introvert within the workplace. Yeah. And so to tell a personal story, when I first graduated, I essentially was doing sales and I was traveling Nine months straight, I went from Indianapolis, got on the plane Monday morning, flew into Maryland, and was in Maryland all the way until Friday afternoon, and then flew back. And I'd have the weekend at home to decompress, and i do it over and over and over for nine months. I was miserable, Mm -hmm. but I didn't have a language for it. Right. I was in a very extroverted job. I was on the phone all the time. Mm Mm-hmm. I was doing face-to-face impromptu meetings with people I didn't know. And did you think like, man, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Why am I not doing a good job at this? And at the time, all of my mentors, all the people I looked up to, Mm -hmm. the media was all putting on a pedestal those that were charismatic and capable of engaging in that type of behavior. That's, by the way, still the time we're in. It is. (laughs) It's still what's exalted. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And and there is an important attribute to that, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I have lots of friends in sales, and they're very successful at it, and it really aligns with who they are. They love it. They get energy out of it. Mm -hmm. But for me, I came home after about nine months of of doing this without ever questioning it and just broke down. Like, I literally (laughs) remember crying on the couch to a family member, Mm -hmm. and it was in that moment where I was like, I got to find something that is more aligned with my internal constitution because this just isn't working. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially when I made the change to get an MBA and eventually a PhD to say, I need to do deep work mm-hmm. way more often. Right? Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't ignore it completely. It's important to still engage in all of this activity with others and in the mm-hmm. moment. But you can make decisions with how you work and where you work mm-hmm. to make sure that you're getting more of what you need for your personality. So you and I both have the experience of denying our introversion yeah. and suffering from it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Right. And it makes it sound bad, but like and it's not a bad thing, right? It's like not. it is who you are. It's a superpower if you recognize yeah. it and leverage it. Yes. Because I also argue that, you know, a lot of times introverts, because they enjoy processing internally and they enjoy deep thinking, if you look across history and there's some great books out there that go through this like quiet by susan kane's a great one Mm -hmm. you know a lot of the scientists and the researchers who have come up with big things are those that are capable and and interested in that type of environment Mm -hmm. that they can you know really do some deep thinking for long periods of time 